It goes without saying that riding a bicycle through the winter can be very tough indeed. But in this video, I'll share the tips and tricks I use to get myself through the winter and hopefully out the outside into spring and summer. And these are tips I've learned over 20 years of riding a bike and very often from making mistakes along the way. But as you get older, you learn from the mistakes and become better equipped for riding through whatever winter might throw you away. Naturally, the first tip is all around the clothing you are wearing and making sure you are dressed appropriately for the conditions you will face. Whether it's cold temperatures, it's mild and moist, or it's just pouring down with rain, whatever it is, you have to make sure you have the clothing to get you through that period of weather. There's now, thankfully, a fantastic choice of good clothing at all price points. Back when I started riding 20 years ago, the clothing options at the affordable end were pretty poor and you really had to buy the best, most expensive clothing to keep you warm and to keep you dry when you're riding a bike through the winter. But these days, that's no longer the case and good options at all price points. Entry level, mid range and a top end. And we're seeing amazing developments in the textile science and fabrics and materials and a combination of these materials to allow you to ride in more comfort than ever before through the winter. If you want a more detailed video on how to dress for the winter and layering and accessories like gloves, head warmers and so on, then check out my video, link down below, go through all the details in great length. Motivation or lack of motivation is a big issue at the time of year. It's cold, it's dark, your mood might be low and get out on a bike can be a struggle. I know firsthand how difficult it can be to get yourself from a sofa to change into your bike kit and out the front door when you'd rather be on a sofa watching TV. I know it very well, it's a real challenge. But there are a few tricks and methods you can use to boost your motivation. Now, probably the biggest trick to boosting your motivation during the winter is to not ride on your own, ride with some friends, a local club or a local group. When you're committed to meeting a person or a club, at nine o'clock or 10 o'clock on a sunny morning, that fear of letting them down will get you out the front door and out on your bike. And riding with friends and other people is also better at the time of year, better from a safety point of view, and it's just good company and helps the miles go by a bit quicker than if you go out on your own. And personally, I prefer doing a short, intense ride at the time of year. Two hours, full quality, flat out from your door to the door, rather than the old fashioned method of doing a long, slow, steady rise, or LSD as the old name. A steady six hour tempo ride, not getting your heart rate up that high, just tapping along, supposedly fat burning, but really pretty boring and very cold and not that much fun at all. So for me, a two hour maximum fun ride, put a smile on your face, get covered in mud, enhance your bike handling skills and to way better use of your time and will keep you fit and strong and focused for next spring. While it can be tempting to ride your road bike all through the winter or maybe go for the indoor trainer, my preferred option is to swap the road bike or the indoor trainer for my gravel bike or even better, my mountain bike. Mountain biking during the winter is great fun. Yes, the trails are muddy, but going out for a one hour, two hour mountain bike ride and getting a really good workout is much better, in my opinion, than four or six hours on a road bike, grinding along in the cold, gradually getting colder and colder until you can't feel your fingers and your feet anymore. But two hour blast on a mountain bike puts a smile on your face, great for your bike handling skills as well, get a full body workout, and you're over and done in much less time than you would be if you're going on a road bike. Now, I suffer from terrible circulation in my hands and especially in my feet. And I can do a ride in not that cold a temperature and my feet and hands turn to blocks of ice. So I pay particular attention to good quality gloves like these and really good overshoes and socks. There's now a wide variety of excellent overshoes and winter boots to choose from, depending on your budget and what sort of setup suits your preference better. But when it comes to overshoes, we are living through an interesting era of options. And the most interesting one is the spats. This 
almost knee high leg neoprene overshoe that provides an incredible layer of defense against the rain and the water and the mud. I reviewed them about two years ago. See that video linked down below. And they're a really good, if expensive, way to keep your feet drier than any other overshoe I've tested in the past. If you're willing to invest a bit more money and you are really determined to ride through any weather, then a winter boot might be the option for you. Now, in the past, personally, I've really struggled with the comfort which has been compromised in that pursuit of insulation and weather protection, but these days they are much better, like New Physiques as an example. Now offering really good comfort with all the insulation and weather protection you want. They are pricey compared to overshoes, but they are the ultimate solution to keep your feet warm and not turn the blocks of ice on a long winter ride. Gloves are also really important as well and not to be overlooked. And I always urge people to spend as much money as they can on the best pair of gloves they can afford. And that's because in my experience, once I lose the feeling in my fingers, my ride is over. I can't really concentrate on anything else but the pain coming from my little fingers. So big gloves, thick gloves, keep you warm and dry are definitely essential. One of the big challenges at the time of year that I really struggle with is just how short the days are. Sometimes it barely gets light at all and just seems to be dark all the time. And I've actually found embracing the dark, the night time, and getting some big powerful lights on my mountain bike and going riding in the woods is a great trick to extend your riding window during the time of year. And riding in the night is fantastic fun. It can be a bit nerve wracking the first time you go out in the dark on the woods on your own or with other people. But once you do it, once you get past that first ride, you will love it and become hooked like so many people do here in the UK. And riding your bike through the woods at night time is also great for your bike handling skills. You can't see the trail you're riding on, so you have to react to the bike slithering around underneath you to really good for your bike handling skills. It also feels amazingly quick because you can only see that much of the trail ahead of you. Everything feels super quick. And it's also safer riding on the trails in the woods than on the roads at night time as well. No motorists to contend with, although you might have the odd badger. While good clothing is clearly essential to help you ride through the winter, there's also an essential product on your bike that you definitely need. I know people do scoff and laugh at them, but mud guards are really good at keeping you much dry and free from mud and other road crap when you're riding at this time of year. And there are loads of mud guards to choose from, and you can get a mud guard to fit just about any bike. The ultimate, the creme de la creme, is the full length mud guard, but you need mud guard mounts on your bike. But they offer the ultimate protection for not just your bike, but also you. Your feet, your bum, your thighs, your back all stay much drier and free from mud and road crap. You also get a range of mud guards that clip onto the frame and fork. They fit any bike, pretty basic, don't provide the same coverage as a full length mud guard, but better than nothing. And then other options include one that goes on your seat post. Good for you, but not the rider behind you. And then, if you must, an R saver. But my experience, as I outlined in the video link down below, they don't really work that well, but perhaps better than nothing. So mud guards, they're not cool, but they do work really well. And at this time of year, it's not about looking cool. I mean, look at me, I don't look cool, but staying dry is cool. So since I filmed all that the other day, the weather, as you can see, has changed quite a bit. We've had a massive dump of snow, really deep, almost five inches in places, and very unusual for this part of the country where I live in, in the Cotswolds. And I'm not very used to riding the snow. Today, I'm out on an e-mounted bike, big fat tires at low pressures. I've got all my clothing on, and I'm having loads and loads of fun. So advice for riding the snow isn't something I'm that experienced in giving. Hopefully, you can give some tips down below in the comment section. But I'm thinking mountain bike over the road bike. Definitely not a road bike, the roads are awful. A fat bike, if you have one, stick to your indoor trainer, probably good advice. And if you do go out, be sensible, be safe, keep it short, let your loved ones know where you're going and how long you plan to be out for. Because while it's all fun and magical, it can be pretty dangerous as well, so be safe. But let me know how you ride through weather like this if you do have more of it where you live, where you are in the world, by leaving a comment down below. So those are my tips and advice for riding through the winter. I learned mostly the hard way through 20 years of riding bikes. 
Now it's your turn. I'd love to hear from you on how you stay motivated during the winter and what tips and advice you have. Feel free to leave a comment down below. And if you want to see a video on how to dress in the winter, layering, accessories, and so on, then watch the video right here. And don't forget to subscribe by hitting the button right here. But that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again very soon.